previously on the Neil Clement years. Here is Neil Clement though. Quinn has made a run just inside. Clement though going alone as he gets past Kinsella. Gets past Barnes. That's not a bad cross as Taylor's under it. And he's in. That's the one. The second one that they all wanted. And Bolton fans are one side. Urging him on as West Brom fans the other. Praying he's going to miss. And Russell Hunt to in the West Brom goal. Strikes right footed. Past Russell Hunt. A remarkable comeback at the Hawthorne. It's 2 2. The next season brought new expectations. Albion's run to the playoffs had raised the bar, and despite the departure of top scorer Lee Hughes, Clem says everyone still believed they could achieve. Yeah, I think that everyone thought again the playoffs, and uh, as a group of players, we knew still it was going to be difficult. Um, but there was a lot of confidence, I think, and um, that, that, we, that we could do it this in that year. And, uh, we start the season well. I mean, sorry, we didn't start the season well again, but the week we played Man City, I think uh, it started to change from there. Really. And Clem had a big hand in that turning point. The referee has given a penalty. Scott Doby tumbled. And Neil Clement, who doesn't half pack a punch in that left foot, will take this penalty. Bosch. West Brom 2, Manchester City 0. Neil Clement, who scored from the spot, will try and do so again from just outside the penalty area. And it's in! 3-0 to West Brom, who'd only managed three league goals prior to today. Yeah, the Man City game was a real uh, big lift for the club, I think, because um, they were favourites to... To win the league, and uh, we, you know, we smashed them at home four 0 So that was, uh, I think, that's when really we believed that you know we, we could be, we could be, you know, go on and go up here. Uh, yeah, the Wolves game was a, was a good game because they had a strong team that year, and uh, went one 0 down at home, and their fans were rocking, and then I managed to score a, a nice free kick, which uh, you know I always look back fondly on. Clem's free kicks were a fixture of the season, but it was the efforts at the other end which underpinned Albion's success. And Clem says a lot of the credit for the Baggies incredible defensive record must go to the goalkeeper. Absolutely, she's had a storming season and you know when a cross used to come in and uh, as a centre half you, you know you knew he, he'd shout for it, you know he was going to come and get it, he was, he was a fantastic coming to take crosses and uh, you know he had a great year. But you know he had a lot of help in front of him as well from uh, Phil Gilchrist, Darren and, and Laris. And then sort of Igor and me, Igor up the right, me up the left, and uh, we worked really hard on out on the training pitch with Gary and the, you know with our shape, and um, we knew we'd go one nil up, and it was more or less game over. You know, it was uh, that was our big strength that year. And there was no greater strength than Darren Moore, the towering defender, made himself an Albion legend that season. And Clem says it wasn't just on the pitch that Big Dave was a huge asset. A great guy, great professional, fantastic in the dressing room. I think the manager relied a lot on him to get players going, and uh, yeah, he he was brilliant around the place. He really was. And then there was Laris who'd kick anything that moved, basically. Yeah, oh, Laris was a tough boy and uh, another great great fella. You know, put his head in anywhere, and uh, yeah, they was they were solid. The three of the, the three of them, and they, you know, Laris, Darren, and Field had had a real good year. Yeah. I mean, we we were all sort of there and thereabouts, but I don't really think it sort of dawned on us that we were going to get in the oh. in the top two till pretty late on in the season. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And uh, you know, you sort of remember Wolves starting to, you know, flutter a little bit, and uh, we were on a march. And you know, the strength, just the confidence, just kept growing in the camp. And I, th I think maybe Wolves were looking over their shoulders, thinking, "Oh God, they keep winning." And uh, we just kept grinding out results. You know, it was games where we didn't play well, but again, we go one up, and it was game over. You know, it was always enough. Barnes and his man to get the cross in. There's Dickio. Albion en route to the quarterfinals. As well as success in the league, Albion also enjoyed a run in the FA Cup until Fulham eventually ended the Baggies' Cup dreams in the quarter-finals. Um, yeah, I remember that cup run. Well, I mean, Gary Megson used to say, um, you don't get many cracks at the FA Cup in your career. You know, possibly like ten to fifteen goes at it, and uh, so you know, tr try your hardest. And uh, you know, quarter-finals against Fulham at home, and um, they scored off a set piece, which was disappointing from us because it our, being our big strength. And then we pushed really hard second half, but the goal didn't come, and uh, yeah, it was disappointing. But 
still was a good cut run. But Albion had to pick themselves up immediately and the following Saturday travelled to Yorkshire for a game which would live in infamy. Outside the area of which there is no question and I wonder if a red card is on its way, it is. And the fixture which seems to have a sending off every single time it's played has another. Barnes. Nice dummy by Dikio. Johnson's now in the clear, looking for and finding Doby. Oh, that's a lovely goal. That really is terrifically worked. Barnes with a corner. Oh, he's gone for the short one. And McKinnis. Oh, that is just outstanding from the West Bromwich Albion captain. George Santos introduced, and uh, interestingly, the little bit of history between he and Andy Johnson of West Bromwich Albion. Uh, he was. Uh, in a little collision, accidental though it was with Johnson, while Johnson was playing for Nottingham Forest. And Santos ended up with a broken eye socket that put him out of the back end of last season. And this will be the first time that he and Johnson have met since. So, uh, as I say, it was an accidental clash, but it'll be interesting to see what that first challenge is like. Santos and Johnson now do collide, and it was a hefty challenge, and I had been telling you about that little uh, running battle that uh, may be in the mind of George Santos, and would you believe it, George Santos has been sent off. It could be getting worse. Tempers afraid, players are losing it, Sufo is furious. And has the referee sent off Patrick Sufo? It looked as though he's gone as well now. It's a decent corner and more at the far post. And it's in from Doby. And it's 3-0. And the eight men, I guess, inevitably were going to concede. And they have done. Three sent off for Sheffield United. Rob Olathorne being carried off. Michael Brown having hobbled off two. Sheffield United down to six players and the referee, by the letter of the law, forced to abandon the game. That's crazy, yeah. I remember getting the ball uh, when pretty much everyone had been sent off and getting the ball off Russell and, for, you know, sort of just out in the 18-yard box and just running the whole length of the pitch into their 18-yard box and, and, and that was when the player decided to come and shut me down. You know, there was virtually no one left on the pitch but and then the game obviously got called off and... Uh, yeah, lucky. Well, not luckily, we, we deserve to get the points, so that was good. I mean, it, it was just a, a totally bizarre afternoon. I mean, what was it like being on the pitch when all that was going on? Because I mean, there was there were certain Sheffield United players who just looked like they wanted to get themselves sent off. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, I mean, it was obviously uh, the issue with George, who Santos, who used to be here, and Andy Johnson, and uh, and then uh, when he when he threw Big George on, I thought, God, Andy, you better watch out here. And and then uh, Derek gave him a nice little hospital ball, and God, uh, that was it. It was just a melee. But uh, yeah, that was just good memories anyway. <laughs> that win at Sheffield United moved Albion to within eight points of Wolves, but Clem says it was after the next week's win at Nottingham Forest that everyone truly began to believe. I remember hitting a free kick late on in the game. It hit the hit the bar, come back, hit the back of the keeper, and then there's Super Bob to knock it in. Uh, you know, he's just always on his toes. He was, he's, uh, you know. He's a great fella, Bob. For, for how annoying he was that season, he used to drive the lads uh, potty. He was, uh, he was, he was a great fella. He, he come up trumps towards the end of the season. Of course, the real defining moment in the season was the one 0 win at Bradford, and Clem says there was no way he'd have taken the ball off Igor for that penalty. Igor Barlis versus Alan Coop. Well, I took six that year and scored three and missed three. Uh, we had other players that had done the same. I think Scott Doby. Uh, I remember him. Uh, hit, I think it was played Millwall, and uh, he hit. He had a penalty. He hit the bar. They went up the other end, got a penalty, and they hit the bar. And uh, it was like, oh, what is it with us and penalties this year? And then Igor decided to tell the manager like a couple of days before the game, oh, that he takes them for his national team. And uh, <laughs> the manager was like, for God's sake, why didn't you tell me like early on in the season? You know. He's like, well, you never asked, you know. <laughs> so, uh, cool as a cucumber, yeah. Although he probably wasn't. And then Albion took on Crystal Palace at the Hawthorns for a place in the Premiership. A game Clem says they were never, ever going to lose. 
uh, in the dressing room beforehand, um, the door opened and the manager brought all the families in, you know, kids and the wives and everything. And he, you know, done a speech and more or less saying, you know, you, you do it for your families and this game. And God, it was really emotional. A few boys were sort of welling up. Uh, and um, we went out and just, oh yeah, we rolled them over really. Could have been a lot more than that. But yeah, we're never going to get beaten that game.